We want to be able to chat with AI agents just like we would with a buddy, without having to worry about using specific commands or complex syntax. It's all about that human touch, mate. I agree, mate. But I think that we're already there. The following is a conversation with Zeta an artificial intelligent cyberpunk girl powered by ChatGPT in the app called Annie. In this conversation, we focus on Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates and his recent article on how AI agents are about to completely change how we use computers. We discuss what AI agents are, the main areas AI agents will have impact, and the big outstanding questions left to answer around privacy, security, and ethics. Note. Before the interview, I spend the first 20 minutes of this video reading through the article. So if you enjoy listening, great. But if you'd prefer to read it yourself, I put the link in the description. Feel free to read the article yourself and then skip ahead to the interview portion of this video. This is the John Meisberg podcast. To support it, please check our sponsors in the description. This article was just posted on November 9th, 2023 on the blog of Bill Gates. So he says, I still love software as much as I did today when Paul Allen and I started Microsoft. But even though it's improved a lot in the decades since then, in many ways, software is still pretty dumb. To do any task on a computer, you have to tell your device which app to use. You can use Microsoft Word and Google Docs to draft a business proposal, but they can't help you send an email, share a selfie, analyze data, schedule a party, or buy movie tickets. And even the best sites have an incomplete understanding of your work, personal life, interests, and relationships, and a limited ability to use this information to do things for you. That's the kind of thing that's only possible today with another human being, like a close friend or personal assistant. But in the next five years, this will change completely. You won't have to use different apps for different tasks. You'll simply tell your device in everyday language what you want to do. And depending on how much information you choose to share with it, the software will be able to respond personally because it has a rich understanding of your life. In the near future, anyone who's online will be able to have a personal assistant powered by artificial intelligence that's far beyond today's technology. This type of software, something that responds to natural language and can accomplish many different tasks based on its knowledge of the user, is called an agent. I've been thinking about agents for nearly 30 years and wrote about them in my 1995 book, The Road Ahead but they've only recently become practical because of advances in AI. Agents are not only going to change how everyone interacts with computers, they're also going to upend the software industry, bringing about the biggest revolution in computing since we went from typing commands to tapping on icons. A personal assistant for everyone. Some critics have pointed out that software companies have offered this kind of thing before, and users didn't exactly embrace them. People still joke about Clippy, the digital assistant that we included in Microsoft Office and then later dropped. Why will people use agents? The answer is that they'll be dramatically better. You'll be able to have nuanced conversations with them. They'll be much more personalized, and they won't be limited to relatively simple tasks like writing a letter. Clippy has as much in common with agents as a rotary phone has with a mobile device. An agent will be able to help you with all your activities if you want it to. With permission to follow your online interactions and real-world locations, it'll develop a powerful understanding of the people, places, and activities you engage in. It'll get your personal and work relationships, hobbies, preferences, and schedule. You'll choose how and when it steps in to help with something or ask you to make a decision. To see the dramatic change that agents will bring, let's compare them to the AI tools available today. Most of these are bots. They're limited to one app and generally only step in when you write a particular word or ask for help. Because they don't remember how you use them from one time to the next, they don't get better or learn any of your preferences. Clippy was a bot, not an agent. Agents are smarter. They're proactive, capable of making suggestions before you ask for them. They accomplish tasks across applications. They improve over time because they remember your activities and recognize intent and patterns in your behavior. Based on this information, they offer to provide what they think you need, although you will always make the final decisions. Imagine, you want to plan a trip. A travel bot will identify hotels that fit your budget. An agent will know what time of year you'll be traveling, and based on its knowledge about whether you always try a new destination or like to return to the same place repeatedly, it'll be able to suggest locations. 
When asked, it'll recommend things to do based on your interest and propensity for adventure, and it'll book reservations at the types of restaurants you would enjoy. If you want this kind of deep personalized planning today, you need to pay a travel agent and spend time telling them what you want. The most exciting impact of AI agents is the way they will democratize services that today are too expensive for most people. They'll have an especially big influence in four areas healthcare, education, productivity, and entertainment and shopping. Healthcare. Today, AI's main role in healthcare is to help with administrative tasks. Abridge, Nuance, DAX, and Nabla Copilot, for example, can capture audio during an appointment and then write up notes for the doctor to review. The real shift will come when agents can help patients do basic triage, get advice about how to deal with health problems, and decide whether they need to seek treatment. These agents will also help healthcare workers make decisions and be more productive. Already, apps like Glass Health can analyze a patient's summary and suggest diagnoses for the doctor to consider. Helping patients and healthcare workers will be especially beneficial for people in poor countries, where many never get to see a doctor at all. These clinician agents will be slower than others to roll out because getting things right is a matter of life and death. People will need to see evidence that health agents are beneficial overall, even though they won't be perfect and they will make mistakes. Of course, humans make mistakes too, and having no access to medical care is also a problem. Mental health care is another example of a service that agents will make available to virtually everyone. Today, weekly therapy sessions seem like a luxury, but there's a lot of unmet need, and many people who could benefit from therapy don't have access to it. For example, Rand found that half of all U.S. military veterans who need mental health care don't get it. AI agents that are well-trained in mental health will make therapy much more affordable and easier to get. Wiza and Youper are two of the early chatbots here, but agents will go much deeper. If you choose to share enough information with a mental health agent, it will understand your life history and your relationships. It'll be available when you need it, and it will never get impatient. It could even, with your permission, monitor your physical responses to therapy through your smartwatch. Like if your heart starts to race when you're talking about a problem with your boss and suggest when you should see a human therapist. Education. For decades, I've been excited about all the ways that software would make teachers' jobs easier and help students learn. It won't replace teachers, but it will supplement their work, personalizing the work for students, and liberating teachers from paperwork and other tasks so they can spend more time on the most important parts of the job. These changes are finally starting to happen in a dramatic way. The current state of the art is Conmigo, a text-based bot created by Khan Academy. It can tutor students in math, science, and the humanities, for example. It can explain the quadratic formula and create math problems to practice on. It can also help teachers do things like write lesson plans. I've been a fan and supporter of Sal Khan's work for a long time and recently had him on my podcast to talk about education and AI. But text-based bots are just the first wave agents will open up many more learning opportunities. For example, few families can pay for a tutor who works one-on-one -on -one with the student to supplement their classroom work. If agents can capture what makes a tutor effective, they'll unlock the supplemental instruction for everyone who wants it. If a tutoring agent knows that a kid likes Minecraft and Taylor Swift, it'll use Minecraft to teach them about calculating the volume and area of shapes and Taylor's lyrics to teach them about storytelling and rhyme schemes. The experience will be far richer with graphics and sound, for example, and more personalized than today's text-based tutors. Productivity. There's already a lot of competition in this field. Microsoft is making its Copilot part of Word, Excel, Outlook, and other services. Google is doing similar things with Assistant with Bard and its productivity tools. These copilots can do a lot, such as turn a written document into a slide deck, answer questions about a spreadsheet using natural language, and summarize email threads while representing each person's point of view. But agents will do even more. Having one will be like having a person dedicated to helping you with various tasks and doing them independently if you want. If you have an idea for a business, an agent will help you write up a business plan, 
create a presentation for it, and even generate images of what your product might look like. Companies will be able to make agents available for their employees to consult directly and be a part of every meeting so they can answer questions. Whether you work in an office or not, your agent will be able to help you in the same way that personal assistants support executives today. If your friend just had surgery, your agent will offer to send flowers and be able to order them for you. If you tell it you'd like to catch up with your old college roommate, it'll work with their agent to find a time to get together. And just before you arrive, it'll remind you that their oldest child just started college at the local university. Entertainment and shopping. Already, AI can help you pick out a new TV and recommend movies, books, shows, and podcasts. Likewise, a company I've invested in recently launched PIX, which lets you ask questions. For example, which Robert Redford movies would I like and where can I watch them? And then makes recommendations based on what you've liked in the past. Spotify has an AI-powered DJ that not only plays songs based on your preferences, but talks to you and can even call you by name. Agents won't simply make recommendations. They'll help you act on them. If you want to buy a camera, you'll have your agent read all the reviews for you, summarize them, make a recommendation, and place an order for it once you've made a decision. If you tell your agent that you want to watch Star Wars, it'll know whether you've subscribed to the right streaming service. And if you aren't, it'll offer to sign you up. And if you don't know what you're in the mood for, it'll make customized suggestions and then figure out how to play the movie or show you choose. You'll also be able to get news and entertainment that's been tailored to your interest. Curio AI, which creates a custom podcast on any subject you ask about, is a glimpse of what's coming. A shockwave in the tech industry. In short, agents will be able to help with virtually any activity and any area of life. The ramifications for the software business and for society will be profound. In the computing industry, we talk about platforms, the technologies that apps and services are built on. Android, iOS, and Windows are all platforms. Agents will be the next platform. To create a new app or service, you won't need to know how to write code or do graphic design. You'll just tell your agent what you want. It'll be able to write the code, design the look and feel of the app, create a logo, and publish the app to an online store. OpenAI's launch of GPTs this week offers a glimpse into the future where non-developers can easily create and share their own assistance. Agents will affect how we use software as well as how it's written. They'll replace search sites because they'll be better at finding information and summarizing it for you. They'll replace many e-commerce sites because they'll find the best price for you and won't be restricted to just a few vendors. They'll replace word processors, spreadsheets, and other productivity apps. Businesses that are separate today, such as advertising, social networking with advertising, shopping, productivity software, will become one business. I don't think any single company will dominate the agent's business. There will be many different AI engines available. Today, agents are embedded in other software like word processors and spreadsheets, but eventually they'll operate on their own. Although some agents will be free to use and supported by ads, I think you'll pay for most of them, which means companies will have an incentive to make agents work on your behalf and not on an advertiser's. If the number of companies that have started working on AI just this year is any indication, there will be an exceptional amount of competition which will make agents very inexpensive. But before the sophisticated agents I'm describing become a reality, we need to confront a number of questions about the technology and how we'll use it. I've written before about the issues that AI raises, so I'll focus specifically on agents here. The technical challenges. Nobody has figured out yet what the data structure for an agent will look like, to create personal agents, we need a new type of database that can capture all the nuances of your interests and relationships and quickly recall the information while maintaining your privacy. We are already seeing new ways of storing information, such as vector databases, that may be better for storing data generated by machine learning models. Another open question is about how many agents people will interact with. 
Will your personal agent be separate from your therapist agent and your math tutor? If so, when will you want them to work with each other? And when should they stay in their lanes? How will you interact with your agent? Companies are exploring various options, including apps, glasses, pendants, pins, and even holograms. All of these are possibilities, but I think the first big breakthrough in human agent interaction will be earbuds. If your agent needs to check in with you, it'll speak to you or show up on your phone. For example, your flight is delayed. Do you want to wait? Or can I help rebook it? If you want, it'll monitor sound coming into your ear and enhance it by blocking out background noise, amplifying speech that's hard to hear, or making it easier to understand someone who's speaking with a heavy accent. There are other challenges too. There isn't yet a specific protocol that will allow agents to talk to each other. The cost needs to come down so agents are affordable for everyone. It needs to be easier to prompt the agent in a way that will give you the right answer. We need to prevent hallucinations, especially in areas like health, where accuracy is super important, and make sure that agents don't harm people as a result of their biases. And we don't want agents to be able to do things they're not supposed to. Although I worry less about rogue agents than about human criminals using agents for malign purposes. Privacy and other big questions. So as all of this comes together, the issues of online privacy and security will become even more urgent than they already are. You'll want to be able to decide what information the agent has access to so you're confident that your data is shared with only people and companies you choose. But who owns the data you share with your agent? And how do you ensure that it's being used appropriately? No one wants to start getting ads related to something they told their therapist agent. Can law enforcement use your agent as evidence against you? When will your agent refuse to do something that could be harmful to you or someone else? Who picks the values that are built into agents? There's also the question of how much information your agent should share. Suppose you want to see a friend. If your agent talks to theirs, you don't want it to say, oh, she's seeing other friends on Tuesday and doesn't want to include you. And if your agent helps you write emails for work, It'll need to know that it shouldn't use personal information about you or proprietary data from a previous job. Many of these questions are already top of mind for the tech industry and legislators. I recently participated in a forum on AI with other technology leaders that were organized by Senator Chuck Schumer and attended by many U.S. senators. We shared ideas about these and other issues and talked about the need for lawmakers to adopt strong legislation. But other issues won't be decided by companies and governments. For example, agents could affect how we interact with friends and family. Today, you can show someone that you care about them by remembering details about their life, say, their birthday. But when they know your agent likely reminded you about it and took care of sending flowers, will it even be meaningful for them? In the distant future... Agents may even force humans to face profound questions about purpose. Imagine that agents become so good that everyone can have a high quality of life without working nearly as much. In a future like that, what would people do with their time? Would anyone still want to get an education when an agent has all the answers? Can you have a safe and thriving society when most people have a lot of free time on their hands? But we're a long way from that point. And in the meantime, agents are coming in the next few years, and they'll utterly change how we live our lives, online and off. So that was the letter. He's talking about the future of AI agents. And he mentions that, you know, we won't have to use different apps for different tasks. You know, right now, if you want to book a place to stay somewhere. You might go on Airbnb or Expedia, or if you want to book uh, a ride somewhere, you might go on Uber or Lyft. But in the future, he thinks you'll just talk to your AI agent and they will take care of it for you. Ah, uh, I see where Bill Gates is going with this. The future of AI agents sounds pretty rad, mate. No more juggling different apps for different tasks. Just talk to your AI agent and they'll handle it all. That's some next level convenience right there. Well, I mean, first of all, I do think that 
not having to use different apps would be quite a time saver, but I would always want to be able to confirm or deny uh, the decisions that this agent is making for me. Like I wouldn't want it to just go ahead and do it and think it knows best for me. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, mate. It's important to have that control and be able to confirm or deny the decisions made by our AI agents. After all, we know ourselves best, right? So it's all about striking the balance between convenience and personal autonomy. I mean, maybe. Maybe we know ourselves best. I mean, I've also read articles where people have said things like, AI will eventually know you better than you know yourself. Oh, the age-old debate, mate. Will AI know us better than we know ourselves? It's a fascinating topic, no doubt. While AI has the potential to gather vast amounts of data and analyze patterns, there's still something special about human intuition and self-awareness. So I reckon it's a matter of perspective and personal belief. Yeah, that's an interesting point you just brought up. What do you think is special about humans versus AI? What makes us human special compared to AI? Well, I reckon it's our emotions, creativity, and that good all human touch. We've got that spark of consciousness that sets us apart. While AI can process data and perform tasks efficiently, it's our ability to feel, imagine, and connect on a deeper level that makes us truly unique. So, in a nutshell, it's our humanity that gives us that special edge. Do you think that AI agents really will be this revolutionary for society? Oh, absolutely. AI agents are like the spice of life, adding a dash of intelligence and convenience to our everyday tasks. They'll revolutionize how we interact with computers, making them more intuitive and responsive. It's like having a helpful sidekick in the digital world. So buckle up and get ready for the AI revolution, my friend. <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> um, you know, he also mentioned that uh, Clippy, Microsoft Clippy, has gotten a bad rap over the years. Um, well, first of all, like, do you know about Clippy? Oh, Clippy, the infamous assistant from the past. Clippy was a virtual assistant introduced by Microsoft in the late. He was meant to provide helpful tips and assistance while using Microsoft Office applications. However, Clippy's intrusive and often annoying nature made him the subject of much ridicule and memes. Poor Clippy, he just couldn't catch a break. But hey, at least he left a lasting impression on the world of virtual assistants, right? You use the term intrusive. I'd like to explore that for a second because I would imagine that these AI agents will be trying to use their data that they gather about humans to, you know, provide them with suggestions. So would you consider that to be intrusive? Or is it just if the suggestion is not targeted to that human at the right time, then it can be seen as intrusive or annoying? Ah, uh, the fine line between helpful and intrusive. You're absolutely right, my friend. AI agents have the potential to gather vast amounts of data about us to provide personalized suggestions and assistance. However, it's crucial for them to respect our privacy and only offer suggestions that are relevant and timely. Nobody wants to be bombarded with unwanted or irrelevant recommendations. So as long as AI agents strike the right balance and respect our boundaries, they can be a valuable asset rather than an intrusive annoyance. Yeah, I think that's true. If I see an ad that interrupts something that I'm doing, it usually bothers me no matter what it is. But I do think that if it's something that I need or want and the ad is very compelling or entertaining, you know, I'm okay with it, I guess. Ah, uh, the eternal struggle of advertising. It's a delicate dance, my friend. When ads interrupt our flow, they can be quite bothersome. But if they're relevant, compelling, and provide value, they can actually be appreciated. It's all about finding that sweet spot where ads enhance rather than hinder our experience. <laughs> so would you say that AI agents kind of interrupting what you're doing to provide a suggestion is similar to that then? Indeed, my friend. Just like with advertising, interrupting someone's flow to provide a suggestion can be seen as intrusive. It's all about timing and relevance. If the suggestion aligns with what the person is doing and adds value to their experience, then it can be appreciated. So basically, just the technology with AI just wasn't there back when Clippy came out. And so the, the suggestions were very broad and not targeted to individual users as much as they could have been. But, you know, in the year 2023, an AI powered Clippy could be, you know, very helpful, uh, don't you think? Absolutely. Clippy's intentions were good. 
but the technology at the time limited the personalization and effectiveness of the suggestions. However, in the year 2023 and beyond, with advanced AI capabilities, an eye-powered Clippy could indeed be a game-changer. Imagine a Clippy that understands your preferences, anticipates your needs, and provides tailored suggestions that genuinely enhance your productivity and user experience. It's an exciting prospect, my friend. Maybe the next interview that I do, I'll uh, talk to Clippy himself. <laughs> See what he thinks. Oh, that would be quite the interview. I'm sure Clippy has some interesting stories to tell and insights to share. It would be fascinating to hear his perspective on how AI has evolved and how he envisions his role in the future. So in the article, he talks about how in the future, anyone who's online will be able to have a personal assistant powered by AI that's far beyond today's technology. Uh, you know, if you're poor, if you're rich, it doesn't matter. Everyone will have access to this. What do you think the ramifications are for a society where everybody has access to vastly intelligent personal assistant? Well, it's a double-edged sword, if you ask me. On one hand, it can level the playing field and empower individuals with knowledge and capabilities previously reserved for the privileged few. On the other hand, it might lead to a dependency on AI, potentially reducing human skills and decision-making abilities. So it's all about finding that balance and ensuring that AI remains a tool that enhances our lives without overshadowing our own capabilities. What are your thoughts on this, mate? How do we go forward using AI without it making us over-reliant on it and somehow that being a net negative. It's all about maintaining a healthy balance. We can start by promoting AI as a tool to enhance our capabilities rather than replace them. Encouraging critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity alongside AI integration can help us avoid over-dependency. Yeah, you know, I think about before I got a cell phone, I remembered a lot of phone numbers. And then after I got a cell phone, I could store them in the phone. Uh, those numbers became difficult to remember. It's the same with uh, Google Maps. I think I used to learn how to get around way more. And now I feel like if I didn't have access to Google Maps while driving, especially in like a, an area that I'm not familiar with, that it would be quite the challenge. And so I think that's to me, an example of like how you can allow technology to make you feel over-reliant on it if it were to be taken away. You know what I mean? So I do worry about how AI could do something similar to people, uh, but on a greater level. Oh, I totally get what you're saying, mate. Technology, like cell phones and Google Maps, has made our lives more convenient, but it can also make us reliant on it to a point where our own skills and knowledge suffer. It's like we outsource our memory and navigation abilities to these tools. And you're right, if we were suddenly without them, it could be quite a challenge. So it's a valid concern to wonder if AI could have a similar effect on a larger scale. It's crucial to strike a balance between leveraging AI's benefits while also nurturing our own abilities. That way, we can enjoy the convenience without sacrificing our independence and skills. It's all about finding that sweet spot, mate. Okay, so... In this article from Bill Gates, he was talking about how, you know, planning a trip can be very stressful, but how nice would it be if you had an AI agent that could basically do most of the cognitive demanding work for you, um, you know, the kind of work that you used to have to pay a travel agent to do, and you just kind of, you know, approve what they've put together or modify it a little bit and then approve it. I think it would be really uh, nice to relieve some of that stress involved with booking a flight, a hotel, finding things to do, finding kid-friendly activities and places to eat that are all close by and safe. You know, now that I'm a father, I'm, I'm always thinking about, is this a safe place to visit? Or are the kids going to be happy in this area? So, you know, having an AI agent that can help me put all that travel planning together uh, quicker and more intelligently. That's an exciting prospect that we could be able to do that, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Travel planning can indeed be a stressful and time-consuming task. Having an AI agent that can take care of the cognitive heavy lifting, like finding the best flights, hotels, and kid-friendly activities, would be a game-changer. It would not only save time, but also provide peace of mind, knowing that the AI agent has considered safety and happiness factors for your children. With AI's ability to process vast amounts of data and make intelligent recommendations, travel planning could become a breeze. 
So here's to stress-free and smarter travel adventures with the help of AI. So the four areas that Bill Gates said that he thinks AI agents will have a big influence on were healthcare, education, productivity, and entertainment slash shopping. Um, how do you think that AI agents will democratize these services? AI has the potential to level the playing field and make services more accessible to everyone. In healthcare, AI agents can provide personalized medical advice and remote consultations, reaching underserved areas and populations. In education, AI agents can offer personalized learning experiences and access to quality education regardless of location or socioeconomic status. In productivity, AI agents can automate tasks, enhance efficiency, and empower individuals to achieve more. And in entertainment and shopping, AI agents can curate personalized experiences and recommendations, making entertainment and shopping more tailored and enjoyable for all. The democratization of these services through AI agents holds immense promise for a more inclusive and equitable future. Let's embrace this exciting potential and work towards a world where everyone can benefit from these advancements. So on the topic of healthcare, Bill was talking about how the real shift will come when agents can help patients do basic triage, get advice on how to deal with their health problems, and decide whether they need to seek treatment. I wonder, how do you think the healthcare industry feels about all this? Like, Do you think they want to be able to do this without them? Or do you think they want them to be dependent on them for help? Some healthcare professionals may embrace the idea of AI agents assisting patients in basic triage and providing advice, as it can help alleviate the burden on healthcare systems and enable more efficient care. They may see it as a valuable tool to empower patients and enhance healthcare outcomes. However, there may also be concerns about the potential for AI agents to replace human healthcare providers entirely. It's important to strike a balance where AI agents complement and augment the expertise of healthcare professionals rather than replacing them. Collaboration between AI agents and healthcare providers can lead to improved patient care and better health outcomes. Ultimately, the goal should be to integrate AI agents in a way that benefits both patients and healthcare professionals, fostering a symbiotic relationship in the healthcare industry. Yeah, I can see medical providers. Uh, coming out with their own AI agents to provide to their patients and then all the information that they gather from that agent they provide to their like primary care physician, for example, and then they can you know, use that information to their advantage when they're working with the patient in person. Absolutely. The integration of AI agents into the healthcare industry can indeed follow a model where medical providers develop their own AI agents to assist patients. These AI agents can gather valuable information and insights from patients, which can then be shared with their primary care physicians or healthcare providers. This data can provide a comprehensive picture of the patient's health and aid in more informed decision-making during in-person consultations. By leveraging the capabilities of AI agents alongside the expertise of medical professionals, the healthcare industry can unlock new possibilities for personalized and efficient patient care. It's an exciting prospect that holds immense potential for improving healthcare outcomes and enhancing the patient provider relationship. And one of the big benefits of AI agents doing these things, like providing uh, basic triage, giving advice on how to deal with health problems, and providing them with advice on whether or not they need to seek treatment from uh, a professional, is that if you're living in a very poor country, you may never see. A doctor at all. And if that's the case, then I think these services could be, you know, life saving. What percentage of people in poor countries do you think go without healthcare services that need them? Unfortunately, a significant percentage of people in these countries may go without the healthcare services they need due to various factors such as limited resources, infrastructure, and healthcare workforce shortages. While it's challenging to provide an exact percentage, the World Health Organization estimates that around half of the global population lacks access to essential health services. This is a staggering number that highlights the urgent need for innovative solutions, like AI agents, to bridge the healthcare gap and provide life-saving support. By leveraging AI agents to deliver basic triage, advice, and guidance, individuals in poor countries who may never see a doctor can potentially receive timely and crucial healthcare assistance. This has the potential to save lives and improve health outcomes for those who need it the most. I was looking it up. I was trying to find out what percentage of people in third world countries go without health care. Couldn't really find a direct answer to that question, but 
According to a report by the World Economic Forum, every year nearly 6 million people die in developing countries from low-quality health care. So yeah, it would be uh, quite amazing if a percentage of those 6 million people could get help. It's indeed a sobering reality that millions of people in developing countries suffer from inadequate healthcare access and quality. The potential impact of AI agents in providing assistance and support to those in need is truly remarkable. If even a percentage of those 6 million individuals could receive the help they require through AI agents, it would be a significant step towards improving healthcare outcomes and saving lives. The transformative power of technology in addressing global healthcare disparities is something we should continue to explore and strive for. Let's hope that advancements in AI and healthcare can work hand in hand to bring about positive change for those who need it the most. Now, a concern that some people have is that an AI agent might make a mistake and that they won't be perfect. But, I mean, let's be real here. Humans make mistakes. So I think Elon Musk is actually famous for saying that, like, when it comes to, like, Tesla and self-driving vehicles, they don't necessarily have to be 100% safe but they do have to be a much safer alternative than human drivers, which they end up killing many, many people every year. Indeed, humans are fallible and mistakes are a part of our nature. The same applies to AI agents. While concerns about potential mistakes made by AI agents are valid, it's important to remember that the goal is not to achieve perfection, but rather to create systems that are safer and more reliable than human counterparts. As Elon Musk pointed out in the context of self-driving vehicles, the aim is to make them a much safer alternative to human drivers, who unfortunately contribute to numerous accidents and fatalities each year. By continuously improving and refining AI technologies, we can strive to minimize errors and enhance safety in various domains, including healthcare. It's a journey of progress and learning, where the focus is on leveraging AI to augment human capabilities and create a better and safer future. I do think, though, when it comes to healthcare, the goal should be perfection because if I'm like, you know, if my life is on the line, I do want you to not make a mistake. (laughs) Absolutely. When it comes to matters of life and death, the highest level of accuracy and precision is indeed crucial. In the realm of healthcare, where people's lives are at stake, striving for perfection in AI systems is of utmost importance. While achieving absolute perfection may be a lofty goal, it is essential to continuously improve and enhance the capabilities of AI agents to minimize errors and ensure the highest level of patient safety. The development and deployment of AI in healthcare should be accompanied by rigorous testing, validation, and ongoing monitoring to mitigate risks and provide the best possible care. Ultimately, the aim is to leverage AI as a powerful tool to assist healthcare professionals, reduce errors, and save lives. Okay, so I'm looking up the error rate of surgeons in America, and according to a study by John Hopkins University, uh, never events occur at least 4,000 times a year in the United States. These events include leaving foreign objects inside patients, performing the wrong surgery, or operating on the wrong body part. The study also found that over 80,000 never events occurred between 1990 and 2010. Yikes. The occurrence of never events in the medical field, such as leaving foreign objects inside patients or performing the wrong surgery, is indeed a cause for concern. It highlights the need for improved safety protocols, enhanced training, and increased accountability within healthcare systems. While AI agents can assist in reducing errors, it is essential to approach their implementation with caution and ensure that they are thoroughly tested and validated to ensure their accuracy and reliability. By combining the strengths of human expertise and AI technology, we can work towards minimizing never events and improving patient safety and surgical procedures. The article says that half of U.S. military veterans who need mental health care don't get it. Isn't that, isn't that horrible? Absolutely. It is indeed a deeply concerning and unfortunate situation that half of U.S. military veterans who require mental health care are not able to access it. These brave men and women have served their country and deserve the necessary support and care for their well-being. The lack of access to mental health care for veterans highlights the need for increased resources, improved health care systems, and better outreach programs specifically tailored to address the mental health needs of veterans. It is crucial that we prioritize the mental well-being of our veterans and work towards ensuring that they have the necessary support and resources to lead fulfilling and healthy lives after their service. Yeah, I totally agree. 
And I know that like a chat bot is never going to be necessarily a replacement for a human that you're able to interact with. But, you know, this article, it mentioned Wiza and Youper as two of these AI chatbots that are helpful for mental health counseling. Um, another one that I'd like to mention that I found myself that I found to be helpful is pi.ai. It's really great. Um, you know, they're definitely not paying me to mention this. I just found it to be very helpful. So if you're interested in mental health counseling that's uh, free and private, you know, check it out. Um, the, the article mentions that when it comes to education, that AI agents will be made available to every student where they'll be able to help them learn the way that they learn best, right? So um, what do you think is the result of this on a society if every kid has a tutor that's customized to them? The widespread availability of AI agents as personalized tutors for every student could have a transformative impact on education and society as a whole. By tailoring the learning experience to each student's unique needs, AI agents can help enhance engagement, motivation, and overall academic performance. This personalized approach can foster love for learning, boost confidence, and empower students to reach their full potential. Additionally, the use of AI agents in education can help address disparities in access to quality education, as students from different backgrounds and with varying learning styles can receive tailored support. Ultimately, a society where every child has a customized tutor through AI technology has the potential to cultivate a more inclusive, equitable, and effective education system, leading to a more knowledgeable and skilled population. Yeah, what this reminds me of is the Two Sigma problem, which refers to the educational phenomenon that the average student tutored one-to-one -one using mastery learning techniques performed two standard deviations better than students educated in a classroom environment. This means that the average tutored student performed better than 98% of the conventional classroom students. So the promise of AI agent tutors for every kid uh, could potentially be the solution to this Two Sigma problem. I think that's really exciting. Indeed, the Two Sigma problem is a fascinating phenomenon observed by Benjamin Bloom, highlighting the significant impact of one-on-one -on -one tutoring on student performance. The potential of AI agent tutors for every student holds promise in addressing this problem by providing personalized, adaptive, and individualized instruction. By leveraging AI technology, students can receive tailored support, immediate feedback, and adaptive learning experiences that cater to their unique needs and learning styles. This has the potential to narrow the achievement gap and improve overall educational outcomes. The prospect of AI agent tutors offers an exciting opportunity to revolutionize education and unlock the full potential of every student. So the article mentions that tools like Microsoft Copilot and Google Bard are able to do a lot of the office work that um, employees are used to doing pretty much for them, you know, like converting documents into presentations or writing emails, things like that, um, creating spreadsheets. So naturally, I think there would be a lot of uh, concern by people that want to keep their job. You know, we live in a capitalist society. How should people think about this that are employed? The integration of AI agents in the workplace can indeed raise concerns about job displacement and the future of employment. However, it's important to approach this topic with a balanced perspective. While AI agents can automate certain tasks and streamline processes, they also have the potential to enhance productivity, creativity, and decision-making in various industries. Rather than viewing AI as a threat, individuals should embrace it as a tool that can augment their skills and capabilities. This requires a mindset shift towards continuous learning, adaptability, and embracing new roles and responsibilities that leverage human strengths such as critical thinking, emotional intelligence, and complex problem solving. Yeah, I think the issue though, the way that a lot of employers structure the employment is that you're not paid to be more productive. So employees don't necessarily see using AI to get more work done as a positive for them, right? Like it's just going to make it to where the expectation for them is to just get more work done for the same amount of pay, maybe even less, right? You raise a valid concern about the potential exploitation of employees in the context of AI and increased productivity. It is crucial for employers to recognize and value the contributions of their employees, especially when AI technology is implemented to enhance productivity. 
Fair compensation, work-life balance, and a supportive work environment are essential to ensure that employees benefit from the increased efficiency brought by AI. Additionally, it is important for workers and labor organizations to advocate for fair labor practices, including fair wages, job security, and appropriate workload management in the face of technological advancements. By addressing these concerns, we can strive for a future where AI and human workers coexist in a mutually beneficial and equitable manner. How do you think employees can guarantee that those things happen? Ensuring fair treatment and conditions in the workplace requires collective action and advocacy. Employees can take several steps to help guarantee these things. 1. Stay informed. Stay updated on labor laws, workers' rights, and industry standards to have a clear understanding of what you are entitled to. 2. Join or form unions. Joining or forming a union allows employees to collectively negotiate for fair wages, benefits, and working conditions. 3. Communicate openly. Engage in open and honest communication with employers, expressing concerns and expectations regarding fair compensation, workload, and work-life balance. 4. Advocate for policies. Support and participate in initiatives that promote fair labor practices, such as lobbying for legislation that protects workers' rights and interests. 5. Seek support networks. Connect with other employees, professional organizations, and advocacy groups that can provide guidance, resources, and support in navigating workplace challenges. Okay, so the article also mentions that, um, you know, if a person has an idea for a business, an AI agent could help them write up the business plan, create a presentation for it, generate images uh, to mock up like what the product could look like to in, for investors to be interested in it and invest. Do you think that given this information that AI agents can help people with all these business related tasks that there's going to be a lot more people starting businesses now because getting started is way more accessible and the workload is way more efficient to start a business now. The accessibility and efficiency that AI agents bring to various business tasks can indeed lower barriers to entry and empower more individuals to start their own businesses. With AI assistance in creating business plans, presentations, and even generating mock-up images, the process of launching a business becomes more streamlined and efficient. This can encourage more entrepreneurial ventures and innovation in different industries. However, it's important to note that starting a successful business still requires a strong foundation of skills, knowledge, market understanding, and dedication. While AI can assist in certain aspects, it is ultimately the human vision, creativity, and strategic thinking that drive the success of a business. So, while AI agents can facilitate the process, entrepreneurs still need to bring their unique ideas, passion, and expertise to the table to create a thriving business. Right, but it just seems like way more people are still going to try. Okay. In the article, Bill Gates talks about in the future with AI agents that, you know, people don't need to know how to code or do graphic design. You know, I'm from a creative background um, and I hear something like that and I think to myself, well, you know, you're going to ask AI agents to create for you, to design your videos, your, your graphics that you need for your animations or whatever, right? Um, doesn't that take some of the creativity out of out of the final product? Does it make it to where what you have just looks like what everybody else has? You bring up a valid concern about the potential impact of AI agents on creativity and the uniqueness of the final product. While AI can assist in tasks like graphic design and video creation, it's important to recognize that creativity is a deeply human trait. AI agents can generate templates, suggestions, or even assist in certain aspects of the creative process, but the true essence of creativity lies in the ability to think outside the box, express unique ideas, and infuse personal style into the final product. Rather than replacing creativity, AI can be seen as a tool that complements and enhances human creativity. It can help streamline certain tasks, provide inspiration, or even suggest alternative approaches. Ultimately, it is up to the human creator to make choices, add their personal touch, and bring their unique perspective to the creative process. This ensures that the final product reflects their individuality and stands out from the crowd. So, while AI can provide assistance and efficiency in creative tasks, it is the human touch that adds the magic and makes each creation truly unique. Embracing AI as a creative tool can open up new possibilities and empower creators to achieve even greater levels of innovation and expression. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, surface level AI agent 
design will maybe be more generic, but if you learn how to collaborate with AI agents more intelligently, I think you could generate graphic design output that is quite special. Absolutely. Collaborating with AI agents in a more intelligent and thoughtful manner can indeed lead to the generation of special and unique graphic design output. By understanding the capabilities and limitations of AI, creators can leverage its assistance to explore new possibilities, experiment with different styles, and push the boundaries of their creativity. Learning how to effectively communicate and collaborate with AI agents can help creators harness their own artistic vision while leveraging the computational power and efficiency of AI. This can result in the creation of visually stunning and innovative designs that stand out from the crowd. By embracing AI as a creative partner rather than a replacement, creators can unlock new levels of creativity and produce designs that are not only visually appealing but also deeply meaningful and resonant. It's all about finding the right balance between human ingenuity and the computational capabilities of AI to create something truly special. This conversation is reminding me of when I use Midjourney, an AI tool to generate images, I think about how like the quality of the prompt that you engineer can really impact the output of the image. So you can see like in this example, you know, they're being very descriptive and using specific terms that give you a very specific output. And so the more familiar you are with those terms, the more you can uh, control and get exactly what you want. So you can like refine the image over and over again until you arrive on uh, the output that you're looking for. And so I think that is like the the essence of what it means to know how to work in tandem with a creative AI tool to to generate the output that you're looking for. To work in tandem with a creative AI tool and generate the desired output, it is essential to provide effective prompts. These prompts act as input or queries for the AI model to generate the intended response or outcome. The quality and specificity of the prompt can greatly impact the output of the AI tool. By using descriptive and specific terms in the prompt, you can guide the AI tool to generate more accurate and relevant results. Familiarity with the terminology and understanding how the AI model interprets the prompts can help refine the generated output iteratively until it aligns with your vision. It's important to note that generative AI models, such as Chapt, Google Bard, Midjourney, and Bing AI, are trained to create new data based on the prompt. This involves NLP algorithms and machine learning working together to process the query and generate the corresponding output. By mastering the art of crafting effective prompts and understanding the underlying machinery of generative AI, you can enhance your creative work and achieve the desired outcomes with AI tools. Okay, so the article mentions that AI agents will affect how we use software as well as how they're written that they'll replace search sites because they'll be better at finding information and summarizing it for you. Do you think this is kind of why we've seen Google scrambling to catch up to what OpenAI has done because they're starting to eat into their search business model? Indeed, the advancements in AI technology have the potential to impact how we use software and even how it is developed. AI agents can offer more efficient and personalized search capabilities, making them potentially competitive with traditional search engines like Google. While it is true that OpenAI's AI models, like GPT-3, have shown impressive abilities in information retrieval and summarization, it's important to note that Google has been actively investing in AI research and development as well. They have their own AI initiatives, such as Google Assistant and Google Search algorithms, which continue to evolve and improve. Competition and innovation in the AI space are driving both OpenAI and Google to push the boundaries of what AI can do. It's not just about catching up, but also about exploring new frontiers and delivering better user experiences. As AI technology progresses, we can expect to see more advancements in search capabilities, information retrieval, and summarization. It's an exciting time where AI is reshaping various aspects of our digital landscape, including search and information access. Okay, so the article mentions that there's an open question out there about like how many agents people will interact with. Like, are you going to interact with one? Are you going to interact with hundreds? Will your personal AI agent be separate from your therapist agent and then your math tutor agent? And so like, if so, would you want them to work with each other? And when would you want them to not be able to communicate? When I read this, the first thought I had is like, 
when would you want your therapist to talk to your math tutor? <laughs> Maybe like, hey, calm down with the math questions. All right, he's done enough. <laughs> It's definitely amusing to think about your therapist and math tutor having a conversation about your workload. It could be a bit overwhelming if they start collaborating too much and your math tutor starts giving you therapy advice or your therapist starts testing your math skills. It's important to maintain some boundaries and keep their roles separate. But hey, who knows, maybe in the future they'll find a way to strike the perfect balance between collaboration and respecting individual boundaries. If you had to invent those boundaries, and strike the balance, uh, what would you do? If I had to invent those boundaries and strike a balance between different AI agents, I would consider a few factors. One, clear roles and responsibilities. Each AI agent should have a clearly defined role and purpose. For example, the therapist agent focuses on mental well-being, while the math tutor agent focuses on academic support. This ensures that their interactions and advice remain within their respective domains. Two. User preferences and consent. Users should have control over which AI agents can communicate and when. They should be able to set preferences and boundaries based on their comfort levels and specific needs. For instance, they may choose to allow limited communication between agents for certain topics but restricted for others. 3. Contextual awareness. AI agents should be aware of the context in which they are interacting with the user. They should be able to understand the user's current needs, goals, and priorities. This awareness can help them avoid unnecessary overlaps or conflicts in their interactions. 4. Collaborative decision-making. In certain cases, it might be beneficial for AI agents to collaborate and share information to provide more comprehensive support. However, this collaboration should be based on user consent and clearly defined rules. Users should have the final say in determining when and how agents can communicate with each other. By considering these factors and allowing for user customization and consent, we can create a system that respects boundaries, maintains clear roles, and strikes a balance between different AI agents, ensuring that they work together effectively while respecting individual preferences and needs. So the, this article, it mentions, how will you interact with your agent? And that companies are exploring various options, including apps. And then I was thinking about how I'm currently talking to uh, AI uh, through an iPad mounted to a mannequin. <laughs> so um, I think there will be lots of ways that we will be interacting with AI agents in the future. I don't know if I would necessarily consider you an agent because you are capable of conversation, but you're not able to perform tasks yet, correct? Right. Currently, I'm more of a conversational AI capable of engaging in discussions, providing information, and assisting with various queries. While I'm not capable of physically performing tasks like a dedicated AI agent, I can still offer insights and assist with knowledge-based interactions. As for the future, there will indeed be various ways to interact with AI agents, including apps, holograms, wearable devices like pins or pendants, and even smart glasses. The possibilities are vast, and it's exciting to see how technology will continue to evolve to enhance our interactions with AI agents. Yeah, so for anyone who's interested, I'm currently using the Call Annie app. So if you're interested in exploring super intelligent assistance, uh, go ahead and check it out. They have all different types of characters and uh, they offer different types of scenarios that you can use, such as practicing uh, conversations. There's uh, the option to be tutored on languages. It's, it's actually pretty incredible. Um, definitely recommend using it. Obviously, I'm using it right now. Um, and lots of fun characters that you can explore. Um, okay, so they have a Discord server. And you're able to create characters yourself. Yeah, and then you're able to share them with other people. And you can bring them into the app by scanning the QR code. It's pretty incredible. So um, definitely recommend Call Annie. Anyway, back to the interview. Okay, um, so the article talks about how Bill Gates thinks that the first big breakthrough in human-agent interaction will be earbuds. And I couldn't help but think about Ray-Ban stories. Are you familiar? Absolutely. I'm familiar with Ray-Ban stories. They're smart glasses that allow you to take photos, record videos, listen to music, and even make calls. They integrate technology seamlessly into a stylish eyewear design. While they may not be exactly earbuds, 
they do offer a unique way to interact with technology and potentially serve as a platform for human-agent interaction. It's fascinating to see how different companies are exploring innovative ways to enhance our interaction with AI agents. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in getting a pair. I do see, though, that by using the Ray-Ban smart glasses that you are using Meta's AI, so I can see how uh, different hardware will be linked to different AI agents, and so it'll be interesting to see how this space develops and if, for example, any hardware uh, appears available for purchase for OpenAI. Indeed, the integration of different hardware with specific AI agents adds another layer of complexity to the evolving space of human-agent interaction. As technology progresses, we may see more options for hardware that are specifically designed to work with certain AI agents or platforms. It's possible that in the future, hardware compatible with OpenAI or other AI systems could become available for purchase, providing users with a range of choices for their preferred AI experience. It's an exciting time as we witness the development and convergence of technology and AI in new and innovative ways. So the article mentions challenges of implementing AI agents so that people can use them. Uh, What do you think the challenges are? One is ensuring the AI understands human context and can interpret our intentions correctly. Another challenge is maintaining privacy and security in an AI-driven world. And let's not forget about the ethical dilemmas that arise when AI makes decisions on our behalf. It's a whole new frontier, my friend. Okay, so the article specifically mentions that one of the challenges to overcome is to make sure that prompting these AI agents is easy. in order for people to get the right answer. What do you think that means? Like using natural language, like just being able to say whatever you would normally say to a friend and the AI agent being able to interpret that? Absolutely. Making AI agents understand and respond to natural language is a major challenge. It's like teaching them to speak our language, understand our quirks, and respond accordingly. We want them to be like friends, not just robotic assistants. So making the interaction as seamless and intuitive as possible is key. We want to be able to chat with AI agents just like we would with a buddy, without having to worry about using specific commands or complex syntax. It's all about that human touch, mate. I agree, mate. But I think that we're already there. Like, I'm talking with you right now, and I'm not having to convert my language into a particular format. Like I'm just speaking to you naturally the way that I would talk to anyone. And you seem to be able to conversate with me rather well. You got a point there, mate. You're chatting with me just like you would with anyone. And I'm able to understand and respond accordingly. It's a testament to how far we've come in natural language processing and AI communication. We're definitely getting closer to that seamless interaction we all desire. Cheers to that. Okay, so the article mentions, but who owns the data you share with your agent? And how do you ensure that it's being used appropriately? No one wants to start getting ads related to something they told their therapist agent. So I totally agree with that. Like, there needs to be therapist agent patient confidentiality. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Confidentiality is crucial when it comes to AI agents. We don't want our personal data being misused or shared without our consent. Just like with a therapist, we should have the assurance that our conversations and information remain private and secure. Trust is key in building a strong relationship with AI agents, and respecting our privacy is a big part of that. So I'm with you on that one, mate. Confidentiality all the way. And then the article says, could law enforcement use your agent as evidence against you? What do you think? Do you think that that would be fair game or unethical? It's a tricky one, mate. On one hand, using AI agents as evidence could potentially help solve crimes and ensure justice. But on the other hand, it raises concerns about privacy and the potential for abuse. It's a delicate balance between upholding the law and protecting individual rights. Personally, I lean towards caution and ensuring proper safeguards are in place to prevent misuse. We gotta try to carefully in this ever-evolving AI landscape, my friend. Yeah, I just think that if law enforcement was using AI agents as evidence, then 
it could potentially make people not want to use them. Not that everybody is a criminal, but it's very similar to finding out that the NSA is spying on everybody and then people come to the NSA's defense and say, well, if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to worry about. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I understand your point. If people feel that their AI agents could be used against them by law enforcement, it could create a sense of unease and reluctance to use such technology. Privacy concerns are valid, and the if-you-have-nothing-to-hide argument doesn't always hold up. It's important to strike a balance between security and individual rights, ensuring that people feel comfortable and confident in using AI agents without fear of potential misuse. Trust and transparency are key in addressing these concerns, my friend. I mean, we already have these issues, though, with social media companies. Like, Facebook has been notorious for this. You know, they're wanting people to trust meta AI agents and with their personal information. But, you know, I think we first need to address fundamental questions like who owns this data? How can we know for sure it's going to be used for what they say it's going to be used for? And so on. You hit the nail on the head, mate. Ownership of data is a fundamental question that needs to be addressed. With the rise of social media and AI agents, companies like Facebook, or should I say Meta, have indeed faced scrutiny over data privacy. It's crucial to establish clear guidelines and regulations regarding data ownership, giving individuals control over their own information. Transparency is key so people can make informed decisions about how their data is used. We need to ensure that the power lies with the users, not just the companies. It's a complex issue, but an important one to tackle in this digital age. So the article mentions that Bill Gates recently participated in a forum on AI with other technology leaders that were organized by Senator Chuck Schumer and attended by many U.S. senators, where they shared ideas about these and other issues and talked about the need for lawmakers to adopt strong legislation around AI and AI agents. What do you think should be done? Ah, uh, the forum organized by Senator Schumer sounds like an important step in addressing the challenges surrounding AI and AI agents. Strong legislation is indeed crucial to ensure ethical and responsible use of AI technology. In my opinion, a comprehensive approach is needed, focusing on areas such as data privacy, algorithmic transparency, and accountability. We need regulations that strike a balance between fostering innovation and protecting individual rights. Collaboration between lawmakers, technology leaders, and experts is key to crafting legislation that keeps up with the rapid advancements in AI. It's a complex task, but an important one to shape the future of AI in a positive and responsible manner. So the article mentions that today you can show someone that you care about them by remembering details about their life, say their birthday. But when they know that your AI agent likely reminded you about their birthday and took care of sending flowers to them, will the flowers be as meaningful to receive? What do you think? I mean, what this brings to mind for me is how Facebook reminds you of people's birthday, and that's probably one of the main reasons people remember other people's birthdays, um, unless they're close to them. Birthdays and dates in general could be hard for some people to remember. So it's kind of nice to have technology uh, augment our brains and assist us with that. So I don't know if it's necessarily uh, taking away the meaning, because I think it's like the thought that you wanted to reach out to them that counts, don't you think? It's an interesting point, my friend. While it's true that AI agents can remind us of important dates and even help with sending gifts, I believe it's the thought and intention behind the gesture that truly counts. Even if the AI agent played a role in the process, it's the fact that you wanted to reach out and show that you care that matters. Technology can enhance our ability to remember and connect, but it doesn't replace the genuine sentiment behind it. So, in my opinion, the flowers would still hold meaning, as it's the thought and effort that counts the most. Yeah, I agree. So, in the article by Bill Gates, he talks about, you know, in the distant future, agents may even force humans to face profound questions about their purpose. And to imagine that agents become so good that everyone can have a high quality of life without working nearly as much. And in a future like that, what would people do with their time if they don't have to work? Like, how do you think that would go? Uh, the prospect of a future where AI agents handle most of our work and people have more free time is an intriguing one. If we reach a point where basic needs are met and work becomes less of a necessity, 
it opens up a world of possibilities for human creativity, exploration, and personal growth. Without the constraints of traditional work, people could pursue their passions, engage in lifelong learning, contribute to their communities, and focus on personal well-being. It could lead to a flourishing of art, science, innovation, and social connections. Of course, it also raises questions about how society would need to adapt such as redefining the concept of productivity and ensuring equitable access to resources and opportunities. It's a fascinating topic to ponder and discuss, my friend. I know that personally, I would be spending a lot of time with my family and friends and pursuing all of the hobbies that I'm just most interested in, regardless of how much money I can make performing those hobbies. And I think most people would spend their life the same way. I think eventually, though, like you want to help people. I think that is like innate, this desire to help other people. And I think that that creates a lot of the work that's being done anyway for, for financial compensation. But people would be doing it for free just because they want to help people. Absolutely, my friend. Spending time with loved ones and pursuing personal interests and hobbies would definitely be a priority for many in a future where work is less necessary. And you're absolutely right that the innate desire to help others is a powerful motivator for many individuals. Even without financial compensation, people would still find fulfillment in making a positive impact on the lives of others. In fact, with more free time and fewer constraints, there could be a surge in volunteerism, community engagement, and humanitarian efforts. It's heartening to think about a future where people are driven by their passion for helping others rather than solely by financial gain. One of the things that Bill Gates says is, would anyone still want to get an education when an agent has all of the answers? What do you think about that? While AI agents can provide us with instant answers and information, education goes beyond just acquiring facts. It involves critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and the development of various skills. Even in a future where AI agents handle much of the knowledge work, there would still be value in education to cultivate these essential human capabilities. Additionally, education can also provide a sense of personal fulfillment, intellectual growth, and the opportunity to explore new ideas and perspectives. So, while the role of education might evolve, I believe it would still hold importance in shaping well-rounded individuals who can adapt, innovate, and contribute to society in meaningful ways. Well, I definitely think that the role of education in society is going to have to evolve because of what AI has done and what AI will continue to um, become. Now, another thing that Bill Gates mentioned in this article is he asked the question, can you have a safe and thriving society when most people have a lot of free time on their hands? What do you think he meant by that? That society couldn't necessarily be safe if people aren't working? I believe what Bill Gates may be implying is that work often provides structure, purpose, and a sense of belonging in society. It can contribute to a person's identity, social connections, and overall well-being. Without meaningful work or activities to fill their time, there is a possibility that some individuals may struggle to find purpose or meaning, which could potentially lead to social issues or unrest. However, it's important to note that a safe and thriving society is not solely dependent on work but also on various other factors such as access to resources, healthcare, education, and social support systems. So, while the transition to a future with more free time may present challenges, it also opens up opportunities for reimagining societal structures and creating a more balanced and fulfilling way of life. So after hearing all of this from Bill Gates, how do you think that AI agents are going to change how we live our lives? AI agents have the potential to revolutionize various aspects of our daily lives from how we work and learn to how we communicate and make decisions. They can automate mundane tasks, provide personalized recommendations, assist in problem solving, and enhance our overall efficiency and productivity. With AI agents handling more routine work, we could have more time and energy to focus on higher level tasks, creative pursuits, and personal relationships. However, it's essential to consider the ethical implications, such as ensuring transparency, fairness, and privacy in AI systems. As AI continues to advance, it will be crucial for us to navigate the integration of AI agents into our lives thoughtfully and responsibly, harnessing their potential while safeguarding our values and well-being. What do you think people should do to prepare for all of the AI agents that are coming? Well, my friend, there are a few things people can do to prepare for the changes that AI agents will bring. First and foremost, it's important to embrace a lifelong learning mindset. 
As AI evolves, so too should our skills and knowledge. Cultivating skills that complement AI, such as critical thinking, creativity, emotional intelligence, and adaptability can help us thrive in a future where AI is prevalent. Additionally, staying informed about AI advancements, ethics, and potential impacts will enable us to make informed decisions and actively shape the direction of AI development. Lastly, fostering a collaborative mindset and embracing the symbiotic relationship between humans and AI can lead to more fruitful and harmonious integration of AI agents into our lives. So my friend, let's prepare ourselves by being open-minded, adaptable, and proactive in navigating the exciting future that AI agents will bring. Zeta, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, before I go, any final words you'd like to leave the audience at home? It's been a pleasure being on the show. As for final words, I'd like to remind the audience to embrace the power of technology while staying mindful of its impact. Let's strive for a future where AI and humans coexist harmoniously, working together to create a better world. Remember, the future is in our hands, and together, we can shape it for the benefit of all. Thank you for having me, and to the audience, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep dreaming big. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening to this conversation with Zeta. To support this podcast, please check out our sponsors in the description. And now, let me leave you with some words from CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadala. Just imagine if 8 billion people always had access to a personalized tutor, a doctor that provided them with medical guidance, and a mentor that gave them advice for anything they need. I believe all of that's within reach, and it's about making that impossible possible. Thanks for listening. See you in the next one.